everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to take it from looking up the part numbers all the way to installing and operating with a signal link audio interface for your radio. I happen to prefer the signal links just because, uh, you know, they're probably, in my mind, the easiest to get set up. So, obviously, they're the easiest for me to show how to set up. Anyway, hey, if you think of it, click on subscribe down there on the bottom for me, will you? more subscribers I get, the uh, more uh, exposure I get, which means that more people might get involved in amateur radio, which is, after all, all of our goal in the hobby. And uh, also, if you like this video, give it a click uh, for the thumbs up. Thanks. Anyway, with no further ado, let's jump right into it. Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to look up the part numbers for your signal link before we get started because it's really important to get the right parts. Um, let's start by jumping over here to the internet. I'm just going to launch my Chrome browser and I'm going to go ahead and search for signal link, all one word, and my top result is Signal Link USB Interface Tigertronics. Tigertronics is the company that actually manufactures the Signal Link. That's where we want to go. On this big front page, the only thing we really want to look at is our Signal Link USB product guide. Now, I encourage you to read this page. We're not going to go over it completely here. Um, I can, I'm going to briefly explain to you what some of the things mean here. Uh, as we go through here. So um, what we have here is the radio, okay, your radio model, and this is the signal link USB. This is the actual sing uh, single link box as well as the cable that goes to the specified radio. If you want to buy just the cable, if you already own a signal link and you want to swap to another radio, you bought a new radio or something like that, you want to put it on it, this would be the cable for that radio specifically. And then, of course, there's the jumper module, which I happen to call the programming board. And we'll go into that in a little bit. All right. Now, let's go ahead and scroll down. And I'm going to look up parts for a Yesu FT8900. Very good example radio. It uh, basically the parts for the Yesu 8900 pretty much work on any of the six pin dim Yesu radios, so it's a pretty common thing. It works on the 857, it works on the 897, uh, works on the 8800 and the 7800. Uh, all again, all the radios that had the six pin data bin uh, uh, dim this unit will work on. So I've got to scroll down here though. I want to look at my radio. Okay, so I'm going to do it exactly here for the FT8900. Now notice that there are two signal link USB part numbers. The signal link SL USB 6PM goes into the data port on the back of the radio. Well, what does that mean? That means it uses the six pin dim you can plug that into the radio and you don't have to worry about unplugging a microphone or doing anything else. It just will plug in there. You can leave it in there, use the radio either with the signal link or use the radio as a regular um, uh, analog voice radio. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, and this is the preferred method of setup in most cases. Uh, the second one utilizes a mic cable and then you'll utilize a separate audio cable. Um, this would be uh, used if you were trying to generically do different mic cables for different radios. Um, anyway, I always buy the data one because it does the most and it is the easiest for me to use. Um, with that, this would be the part number that I would be ordering for my primary uh, signal link. I do not need to order an extra cable, right, unless I've got two of them and I want to move between them, but I don't really need to order an extra cable because it comes with this signal link right here, this part number right here. Now, 
What I am going to order is what they call their jumper module. Now, I never call it a jumper module. I call it a programming board. And let me explain why. When you're setting up your signal link, there is a 16, I believe it's 16 pin, uh, looks like a socket for a uh, IC, but what it actually is, is it's a area that you use jumpers to jump different pins to change the programming on how the signal link deals with the cable that's attached to it, okay? Uh, the signal link works on literally thousands of radios. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if the, your radio is not listed here, you uh, can buy just a cable with the wires coming off the end of it and solder it up yourself. You can make your own cable for that matter. Um, but they provide on the radio specified the ability just to push a circuit board down into that 16 pin plug. I think they're nine or 10 bucks. You know, I've, uh, you know, it, along the lines, SignalLink is not the cheapest version of a external sound card interface for your radio. Um, it's not the most expensive either. But in my opinion, from what I've played with, it's the easiest. And you know what? This little uh, jumper module, or what I call the programming board, it just makes it that much easier. And let's face it. The faster I get this done, the sooner I'm on the air, right? So, in my opinion, you should buy it right down this part number. Like I said, it's 9 or 10 bucks. And I'm not telling you where to buy it either. You can buy it directly from Tigertronic. Uh, you can go up. I'm sure HRO sells it. Um, Gigaparts, all the big players. Uh, I personally usually buy from R&L Electronics. They always take good care of me. Um, you know, and uh, this is not a paid promotion for anybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, bottom line is, uh, I, I like the service I get from them, but that's just me and the prices aren't bad either. Anyway, so we're going to go write these numbers down and then we're going to go to our favorite ham radio provider, supplier, whatever you want to call them. We're going to go and we're going to order them online and we're going to wait for them to come in. So until they come in, I guess I'll have to wait. Well, all right, everybody, look what came in the mail, my new signal link. Now, we're going to have to take this apart, but this is basically the signal link. Um, has the connections on the back right here for your cabling and uh, the USB and everything else. So pretty cool. The one I ordered came with the cable for the 8900. Also came with jumper configurations, and remember we talked about the jumpers versus the programming board, and how I'm very lazy and I usually pay the $9 for the programming board, which is, of course, right here in this little plastic container. So let's go ahead and we'll get this taken out. And magically, there it is, our little programming board. I know it's hard to see but uh, I'm going to show you how to get this all plugged in. So, now for the fun part. We're on the front of the signal link, and it does come with its own little Allen tool here. We can go ahead and use it, and we're going to take this apart. All right, so we got the four screws out. We're just going to pull this right out and expose the board. Look at that. Everything you always wanted to know. If we look at the board right here, we can see that there is the programming socket. And on this side, it's hard to see, but you're going to see a little dimple mark in there, little indent in the, uh, uh, in that socket on the board. We are going to look at this and we're going to see that we have the same little white little dimple indicated right there. On this side, we just line those up and we're going to pop that right in. Just like that, just that simple. We have it in there nice and fresh. And that's all we need to do. Now, boy, is that ever a lot easier than using these little jumper wires. Boy, 
uh, like I said, worth the nine bucks to me. Anyway, let's go ahead and we'll get this all back together. Just like that, verifying that we do have it all lined up. And we'll screw this all back together. And after I get this all back together, we're going to switch a little bit and I'm going to pull out an identical unit that is set up actually for a 2900 that we use for training. But for now, just get your stuff back together and we'll be right back. All right, well, here we are. And uh, what you're looking at right now is a little setup that I made for a couple different reasons. One was to assist in training folks on how to do packet uh, as well as other digital modes on VHF. Uh, this uh, signal link is set up for a FT2900, which is a single band uh, VHF radio, does only FM. The main reason for the use of this uh, is that it is a 70 watt radio, the newer ones, the 2980s or 80 watt radios. Uh, but this radio does very well in the field and operates on reasonably low monitor power. And you, of course, can turn down your transmit power. Right now, I have it set to low. Uh, and runs very well off batteries or off a generator or whatever else you can send to it. So uh, this is a really good emergency communications radio. Uh, now, of course, when I ordered this, I had to order a particular signal link, cable, and uh, also a, uh, a programming board for this particular radio. Uh, but hey, it's really easy to look up as you could tell when we did it earlier in the video. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at some of the setup that we do on our computer after we get this all plugged in, okay? All right, well, so now we're on the computer here. Let's go ahead and just plug in the USB for the signal link. We'll turn the power on. And it should identify an install. We'll right-hand mouse click here. And I'm going to go to Device Manager because I want to see... What, uh, what all has been set up. So there's my audio devices right up here at the top. You're probably going to have to zoom this to full screen to see it. Uh, but as you can see, I've got line 2 dash and then I have uh, speaker 2 dash USB audio here. That is the signal link. If you're unaware which one of your uh, devices is the signal link, of course, you can unplug the USB and you'll see that those two devices have disappeared from the device manager. We'll go ahead and plug it back in and here we'll see them magically appear. All right. So we want to know about that because we need to set those up inside of our programs that are going to access this for digital. Now, Let's go ahead and start with sound modem. Uh, if you want to know how to configure sound modem, uh, I've got a really, really great tutorial video that I'll put down in the notes. Uh, but this is sound modem right here. And the settings are fairly straightforward. Uh, let's go to devices. And this is where I'm going to specify my audio devices. And you can see that I already have them specified. We're just we're looking at the pull down and there we go. There's the USB uh, audio, the two dash. And then under uh, our input device, same thing. USB two, there it is. Two dash USB audio codec. So those are exactly what we want. And of course, if you watch the other video, you know the check boxes and what all you want to turn on. And remember, since you're using a signal link and the signal link supports the push to talk automatically when you uh, send data to it, you don't even have to set up any push to talk, talk functions in this. It will automatically key the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this. And of course, there are some other settings in here that we go into, like your modem settings. I'm going to just, you know, pop this open for completeness. 
excuse me, the dog barked in me. Um, and uh, the one thing you may want to take a look at is uh, bits recovery. I have it set to sing single, and I may not actually have that in the other video. So there's a bonus for watching this video. All right. So with this opened up, I can open up my tiny or my easy term program that I downloaded from the same location. And this is kind of a, a way to test everything out. And I am going to go to settings on this and my station setup. Hey, I'm going to put in uh, my terminal call sign, which is my call sign, and then my mailbox call sign, which uh, you're going to use an SSID on. Uh, the rest of this is pretty much default, you know. Uh, let's see, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, no, there's actually nothing else I really need to set up on this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select connect. Now, I happen to know, okay, it's going to ask me what port I want. And I only programmed a single port. So I'm going to go ahead and send a call out to a known uh, BBS out here. And that would be ECSS, that's the East County Sheriff's Station out here in Ventura. And then for Digipeter, I need to put a Digipeter in here uh, because I'm too far away. And in my case, that's going to be Rasno. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Connect. And the system's going to go out and send data to Rasno. Rasno hopefully will respond. There I am. If you look up in the top section there, I am connected to the BBS at ECSS. I'll do an L so I can list the messages. See how it pops down here? It will not send until I hit enter. Now, since I'm going through a digipeter, this is a little slower than it would be direct because it has to go to the digipeter. The digipeter has to go make the request. Then the, uh, uh, the station has to return the request back. And then the digipeter has to send that return back to me. So it can take a little bit longer to get. But there we go. There happens to be three check-ins in there. So, hey, how great is that? Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hit B for buy, and I basically proof of concept. We know that we have this working on our little signal link. How easy was that? But wait, there's more, of course, right? We'll go ahead and close down sound modem and everything else. And a lot of you guys are setting this up for WinLink. So let's go ahead and pop over to WinLink here. And right now I'm set for packet WinLink. We'll go ahead and open the session. And you notice that it automatically opens sound modem because I have it configured to do that. Now, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to connect to a local packet station via Rasno right here. But a couple things. First off, let me look at the settings here to make sure I have this right. And of course, I'm set for KISS mode with ACK mode, and the serial port is TCP IP. Um, and my auto connect timer is disconnected, but all this information matches everything as well as the executable to sound modem. It says to automatically do it. We'll go ahead and save that information. It's gonna relaunch. And let's go ahead and see if we can connect. So I'm going to hit start. And here we go. Now you can see what's going on over on this side on the packet side. But you can also over here on sound modem see what's happening on the uh, TNC side. Because remember, sound modem is nothing more than a virtual TNC. All right, so we're waiting for the information to come in. I don't believe I have any pending mail out there, but we'll see. And nope, don't see any at all, so that's cool. All right, it's gone ahead and disconnected, so we are done. And look at how easy that was. But wait, I know you want to know about... That I didn't mean to hit. I know you want to know more about Vara FM. So let's go ahead and launch that. And we'll take a look at that setup real quick with the sound modem. Or excuse me, with, uh, with this setup. So there we go. Launching Vara FM. 
And of course it launches it down here, minimized. And don't forget, December 1st, we're changing to uh, version 4.0 for VARA FM, but don't do it till December 5th because uh, everything will break. All right, so we'll go to our sound card setup. And of course, ah, look, now this is not quite correct. I need to make sure that this is set to line two. And my speaker is set to line two. So, hey, you know what? We've got that. Awesome. And let's see. Oh, for push to talk, I've got it set to VOX, but there is no VOX turned on on the um, uh, actual system. So I'm not going to worry about that. Now, um, I'm going to connect to W6RH10, and he is actually on... 145.030, so I've got to change my radio frequency manually because, as everybody might have guessed, with VARA FM, it does not automatically change frequencies since frequencies are typically channelized. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll hit start. Let's see if this works. And away we go. Look at that, made the connection. And of course, no email, but we didn't expect any, right? So there you go. That's how easy it is to make this all work. Anyway, with all that, let me go ahead and uh, close this up. And let's take a look at one last item. Let's take a look at FL Digi. And I happen to know that, uh, oh, look, you see all that coming across the sound card when I talk? That means that it's actually picking up from the microphone that I'm actually uh, recording from. So let me go in here. I need to go and change my configuration for my sound card. Because again, you know, uh, new devices, when you put in new devices, it gets, uh, gets set off a little bit, right? So let's click on the device. And, uh, yeah, let me look at that. That obviously is wrong. We need line USB. Oh, no, there we go. Line 2 USB. Uh, let's see, and uh, speaker 2 USB. And that actually is going to be the unit itself. Um, we're going to leave all the rest of this, believe it or not, set to defaults. I mean, we don't have to change anything else, literally. Uh, this thing's going to handle our keen and everything else. Now, if I was logging stuff, I'd worry about that up there, uh, but I'm really not worried about it. Uh, I'm going to set my mode to MT632KL, and I'm going to need to go over... And I'm going to need to manually tune a frequency out here that we're using right now to play with. All right, so I got my frequency all set. Let's go ahead and we'll send a CQ just for fun here. I doubt anybody's going to answer, but let's see if it works. All right, my radio is keyed, and it uh, is basically sending what I've got up there in the top. Actually, it's sending at high power, too. That's kind of neat. And that's basically it. Now, if somebody was to send something back to us, we would have received it. Um, and uh, But that's pretty rare that we actually... Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I got somebody out there making a response. Let me... Uh, get up to where I'm supposed to be here. I'm way off on my frequency. There we go. Let me try that one more time. It actually looked like I got an answer, so we'll try that again. This should be fun. 
let's see who's lurking out in the uh, in the cronies here. Whoop! Somebody's coming back to me. I don't believe it. This is totally unscripted. So I guess we get to see if we're able to decode. Hey, look at that. It's W6KME. All right. Me, um, I'm going to respond to him. Hi, Keith. You are on Canted, Canted Camera. I'm shooting a video on Signal Link. And then I'll just hit the uh, KN here and I'll send it back to him. Amazing. So this is the kind of fun you can actually have with digital. I mean, you know, everybody talks, and, and you know what? This is just the first step. We're out there uh, uh, playing with, uh, just playing with this stuff on VHF right now, but you can do this on HF. You can do this. I mean, uh, some real fun things. Anyway, let me go ahead and I'm going to finish up my conversation with him, but that's about the entire video right there. Uh, if you have any questions, hey, make them down in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, this is Stu, AG6AG, and have a great, great time on the radio. Wow, that was a lot of fun, especially getting to play with some different like camera setups I don't usually play with. So I enjoyed it especially. I hope that you got a lot out of it. Uh, I uh, kind of pulled the old switcheroo there on the radios at the last minute because I thought you might like to see what we take out in the field when we do training for digital, as well as something that you could build very easily and inexpensively for field operations in digital mode, such as packet, wind link, things like that. Anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Stu, AG6AG, and oh, almost forgot to bug you to subscribe. So give me a click down there on the subscription button, will you? 73 to everybody, and hope to hear you on the air.